single year, okay? For whatever reason, I think there's maybe been one year I've never had you in my division, right? And usually this match is one of those marquee matchups. Division title is at stake, which it is. But be honest with me, bro. And I'm coming at to you right now, dude. You can't get excited about these rosters. We're benefiting from a really, really bad division. There's not a lot of hype in this at all. Just a lot of things have gone wrong, I think, for both teams. I think when I look at this matchup, they're both completely set up different ways. You went running back heavy, and they were all busts. They, they were all busts, like, bottom line. Like, I did not feel comfortable with pretty much any of the running backs you took. Todd Gurley hasn't gotten hurt yet, but he keeps falling into the end zone, not doing much of anything else, though. And you're hurting everywhere else, pretty much. My side of things, I the only thing that really is exciting is Kyler Murray. Everybody else is very boom or bust. And it's a reason why I have not crossed 100 points, I think, in three weeks, which is just gross thinking about it. I don't think it's going to happen this week. Andre, you could, you could say, yo, now you're trying to be reverse psychology. And I'm really not, dude. I tried to find a balance of Chase Edmonds and somebody else. Can't happen. Barkley's gone, and we had all year to figure out some RB2 situation. We really don't have it. Uh, on the flip side of things, Lockett after the uh, Cardinals game has just been non-existent. He's been 6-8 to eight points. DJ Moore is pretty much the same caliber guy. Robert Woods uh, theoretically should have a good floor, but he's had two, two duds. T. Higgins is probably the only guy that I'm really getting hyped for because of the volume that he's getting. Tight end is kind of non-existent, and the running backs are non-existent. So when you don't have running backs to back up guys who are boom or bust, you're in trouble. Your side of things, I think you get, your team just has a very low floor but no ceiling, so it's the opposite. I think my guys have a high ceiling but, like, absolutely zero floor. So this is where we find ourselves in these matchups where we're only putting up 90 or something points. I'm going to make this short and sweet, right? This is going to be the second time this year where both of our teams do not cross 100 points. Um, I'm also dealing with, as I'm recording this right now, it is Wednesday, 3.53 p.m. I have not gotten any last-minute update on Tyler Lockett. If this guy is out, dude, this is not good for me because we saw what he did in that matchup, and he's going to be a little banged up. And I know how Seattle plays their guys very cautiously. Very cautiously. And I've seen this last year when Tyler Lockett was iffy, man. He was non-existent for three weeks, showed up one week, and then did not show up for the finals. So, yeah, this guy's going to be the death of me, and I probably have to look elsewhere next year. Uh, I love the guy to death, but, man, it's just too boomer busty for my liking. Although, if the price does drop uh, accordingly, his connection with Russ is still good, but something's going on in Seattle. I just don't know what the answer is for it. Andre, I'm not, I, I don't know what to say about this matchup. This is clearly the worst matchup of the week, even though the division title is at stake. Um, I think this is the lowest scoring game of the week, uh, far none. I know you're dealing with Joe Mixon injury. You're dealing with Teddy Bridgewater, who's in a nice matchup. I, I don't know what to say, dude. I really, really don't like this matchup. Um, I think, you know, an 80-something victory is 7.70-something. Is kind of in play, man, but I, I am not – I want – Andre, you have no idea how bad I want to come out here, roast your team, but, like, I'm just I – like, I like some of the players. I have no running backs and Lockett being out. Like, these guys are not what I predicted them to be. Uh, they fell into the trap of being too boom or busty. I thought Moore and Lockett would have a substantial floor with decent upside. They don't have a floor at all this year. Barkley down. You name it. Everything has not gone right for me I, this year. I mean, I've had some decent games, but there's a reason why we're like the two lowest scoring teams in the league, man. It's it's gross. It's gross. Well, Andre, I can't really even get mad at you if you do beat me. Um, I really can't. Like This team is not what I thought it would be. Your team obviously is not well-deserving, but I do think that it's important for one of us to win this game because the other two guys in our division are starting to heat up, including the cousin who I am hyping up. So, Andre, I don't know what the hell is going to happen. This matchup, this matchup, I, I got news for you. 
you guys didn't quit. I know Allen never really quits, but you wouldn't know it if he keeps losing. If he keeps winning, he's going to talk. Alex has had two really uh, – one really good game last week and then had, uh, you know, I don't even know what to call it. Nick Chubb is back. Allen is finally – again, uh, for those of you who are new, I know, Alex, you are not familiar with this league. But Allen plays for November, but he forgets the months of September and October, thus – always making missing out the playoffs by a game because he doesn't factor in the first two months. This is literally what he does every year. I know people were shitting on his team and Johnny wanted to put him at 12 and I only did it once he only had one win because I was forced to, but this is why I don't count this kid out. Boys, both of you that are listening right now, uh, the division title is well in your grasps. Okay. Andre, you just have to, here's the scenario you need to happen though. You need me really to beat Andre because if Andre gets the six wins, I think that nails the division. Um, I think Andre and my teams are the most likely to lose out, if that's a word. My teams don't have any running backs, and I still have DJ Moore on a bye, whereas his team's just not very good. Um, so if you're true, if you're really rooting for somebody this week, you need to get uh, Allen as you want a DBZ reference. You need that Goku uh, send me your energy kind of gift for the spirit bomb, because I'm going to need to take care of cousin number one as cousin number two is starting to heat up. Um, I'm loving what I'm seeing out, out of your roster because now you have two viable running backs. Allen, I know it goes in one ear, out the other, but this year with all the injuries and everything, if you don't have the substantial floor for running backs when this year has been so boom or bust, your team is going to look like garbage, and it looked like that in the months September through October. November, I know you haven't put up any big points, but things are starting to look up. So I back you up on this, 100%. By the way, by the way, and I know you can talk all your shit now because you don't have him. Robbie Anderson, to me, was not doing much with all of the... He doesn't get any touchdowns, which means that he is like an 8 to 10 point guy a week. He doesn't do anything with the targets. I hate to say it, but DJ Moore, I feel like, is the better uh, asset because he's he's the one who's going off. Robbie Anderson's just getting like 8 points. Um but this team scares the living crap out of me. And I'm talking about Alex because now in a year where running back floor had like running backs just been awful running back and tight end. God awful running backs. You really don't have any established floors when you think about it. Right. But this kid has guys that are very safe. Now I know the combination of Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs is really not that appealing. I get it because they might be viewed as guys who are touchdown or bust kind of guys. But with how bad running backs been this year, this might be by default the best running back combination that we have to go off of. It really does. Uh, Chubb and Hunt are both fine. They're both low in RB ones, high in RB twos. Josh Jacobs gets the volume. Um, this is a guy I tried to buy. Like if you see the volume, and I understand David Montgomery's getting volume. David Montgomery sucks. Josh Jacobs is a really good running back. Um, the only thing that really sucks about Alex is that he does not have Josh Allen, and I don't like Matt Ryan for this week, but I do think that there is a very, very, very high possibility that whoever wins this matchup, this is this is your season on the line, guys, because I don't think that five wins wins the division, considering that you guys have three. I don't think five wins can win it. I do believe that our division winner might somehow win with six wins. Let's break down the matchup, um, because I do think that even though the title is on the line and the other uh, – Matchup between me and Dre, this one seems a lot more exciting, so I put it over as as a decent matchup. Sean Watson, Alan, you made that move, and I think I think it was interesting that you you bought in on Deshaun Watson. He's kind of like the forgotten quarterback this year. Matt Ryan, uh, needless to say, I got to go to Sean Watson against New England. Um, Alan, you're very fortunate. Paul's going through a rough patch right now because uh, Watson, you traded for him in a win game, which. Uh, which was very, very risky because obviously he didn't do crap. Uh, New England's defense not really that good. Stephon Gilmore or not, um, I still think he can kind of be very serviceable. Uh, Bill Belichick struggles against mobile quarterbacks. So give me Deshaun Watson over Matt Ryan. Now, when we look at the receiver matchups, these are guys that are very interesting. These are guys that are going to go extremely high next year with the exception of uh, two of them. But Terry McLaurin, DJ Chark, Justin Jefferson, and Devontae Parker. All right, let's break this down. Terry McLaurin is an absolute bona fide stud. I think this guy is – I think I – Alan, I think you listen to the podcast still, so if you do, I appreciate it. This is one guy that I just absolutely just love, and he's probably 
I hope me and you are on opposite ends of the spectrum as far as where we're drafting next year because, like, I'm probably going to reach for this guy next year. Uh, I told you that two years ago when we were at the draft and I was drunk and I said I really like Terry McLaurin. Guy's an absolute beast. Uh, he's got such a good floor. I said he was this year's DJ Moore because worst case scenario, I think you're getting 12 points out of him. DJ Chark is a little interesting. Um, I still don't know if Jake Luton is a great quarterback. It's hard to judge off of a win game in uh, Lambeau Field, although they did seem to be pretty competitive. I I like this matchup for Chark to a point. I think garbage time and volume base, I think he could be okay. Um, flip side of things, Justin Jefferson is just absolutely amazing. The only thing that sucks with Justin Jefferson is the minute they can get the run game going, they are not passing the ball. They play the Dallas Cowboys. Chicago was a tough matchup, so they had to throw. But going back to Justin Jefferson, it's weird because he hasn't done much in cake matchups, and that's because Dalvin Cook has taken over. So if this is a game where you feel like Dalvin Cook is going to go off, Justin Jefferson's not going to do anything. Um the games where Cook and Justin Jefferson have done well is because Minnesota was in a back-and-forth shootout half the time. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think Minnesota is somehow after the bye. They've been winning all these games, uh, to be honest, and uh, they're trying to lock up their playoff dreams, which for whatever reason, they're kind of still alive. So I think the offense goes through Dalvin Cook against the Dallas Cowboys. I don't expect Dallas to shut him down like Chicago did. Um, they'll control the game, so I think you can be looking at maybe an eight-point performance out of Justin Jefferson. Devontae Parker, I had to get rid of this guy. Um, uh, if Fitzpatrick was still the quarterback, I would love him, but Tua is just killing everybody's fantasy value. I think this is an easy slam. I can't say easy because of Justin Jefferson, but I'll take the Allen side of things up the receivers. Uh, believe it or not, I do think that Chark has garbage time potential, and I think McLaurin, regardless, in a very easy matchup, could probably be the highest scoring guy in this matchup. Wouldn't shock me at all. These are guys you got to get hyped for, Allen. Uh, DeAndre Swift and Antonio Gibson versus Josh Jacobs and Nick Chubb. So we got two guys that are... Uh, this, this could be really interesting. I'm looking at this right now. So DeAndre Swift is officially named the starter. Everybody's happy. Here's my only but where I want to press pause. Still is Matt Patricia. And I know last week... We've seen this time and time again. Every time this guy gets hyped up, he has not lived it up the next week. Now, does the official starter name tag make us believe that he can do it? I hope so. I really like this guy, but I can't get comfortable knowing that Matt Patricia is the head coach. That's, that's, that's my only pullback because we've seen this now. He goes off and then he doesn't do anything the next week. But if they are officially giving him the workload, I don't see any reason why you should pull back. The only thing that would strike me to believe that is if it's an RBBC because they have a Thanksgiving week and maybe they unleash them then. Antonio Gibson, uh, I know people, you know, I like this guy. I don't know why J.D. McKissick is being so used heavily. He's not bad, but just imagine if they didn't have uh, J.D. McKissick getting as many snaps. I think Gibson is an RB1. Um I like both of these guys. They they both go. No, they don't go against each other. That was last week. But it's fun. I, they're both in really positive matchups. So got to watch out there. Josh Jacobs against Kansas City. He'll probably find the end zone. Um, you're starting to see more and more Devontae Booker, which is very interesting because he looks, he looks really good in Oakland. I mean, he, you didn't see this anywhere in Denver. And he's being used not just as a pass catcher, but between the tackles type runner. Um, against Kansas City, Kansas City... I think is going to have a really good game plan to kind of take out Josh Jacobs in this one. I am a little bit nervous. Nick Chubb against Philly looked pretty decent. Uh, Philly uh, run defense isn't as amazing as it used to be. It's still respectable, though. But I have to go with Swift and Gibson here. I, I'm i just going to play the matchup card. These are really nice. Logan, Thomas, Hunter Henry. Um... I got news for you. Hunter Henry has just been a bust. Uh, I, I want to go dart throw and go Logan Thomas. Allen, if you want to be superstitious, go ahead and do it. But I, 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 this is what I believe. Here we go. Michael, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike Williams, Mike Thomas, and Mike Davis 
versus Mike Williams and Amari Cooper. Okay, now, Alan, you can breathe a sigh of relief because I absolutely hate Michael Thomas and I hate Mike Davis. Mike Davis has not done anything since the first two weeks he took over for Christian McCaffrey. He has really, really started to slow down. And the fact of the matter is this. I know McCaffrey's already ruled out. You're probably hyped. Temper your expectations here. Uh, Curtis Samuel gadget plays are just killing his value, and he hasn't really looked that good. Just saying for what it's worth. Um, Davis will probably hit 12 points because of the matchup, so I, I understand that. But Michael Thomas, no thank you. I, I, I think this guy just might be the bust of the year. Uh, Mike Williams against the Jets looks like a solid matchup, but I, this guy's just like really impossible to predict. Amari Cooper, believe it or not, is very sneaky. I think this guy is going to shock the matchup in this one, and I'm actually going to be very bullish on him. I'm going to say 18 points for Amari Cooper. I'm going to battle of the defenses. Washington versus Cincinnati. Washington might give up some points, but they'll get a crap ton of sacks. Burrow drops back a lot, which is going to be good for interceptions, and it's going to be good for sacks. So I like that end of it. The spectrum, New, Eng New England D was picked up, which is interesting. Uh, I am not big on New England D. Slam dunk for Allen. Uh, the only thing I see going on here, the scenario on how Alex has to win is if Justin Jefferson goes off. Let's say for whatever reason, Dalvin Cook gets shut down. They build up the passing game. Jefferson goes off. And then I think that that's the key ingredient here is Justin Jefferson would have to really go off to give you a chance. Now, it's interesting because you do have – if I'm not mistaken, you have a lot of guys in the later slates, which is which is cool because I always like that knowing that, you know, I'm sitting comfortably Thursday Thursday night and I'm sitting comfortably for the first half of the Sunday games knowing that, like, I'm just waiting. I don't like having to wait on Monday, though. I'd rather it just be 4 p.m. and then move on with my day. But, uh, yeah, I, I do think that Justin Jefferson is the icing on the cake here because I'm not big on Mike Williams and I'm not big on Devontae Parker. Alan, you just have to hope that you guys hit in the matchups that they're supposed to hit on. Because if you reach your projections or go above them, I don't see any way you lose this game. Uh, there is no Josh Allen that you have to go up against, so I think Watson would be great in this matchup. Alan, I got, I got news for you, buddy. You're probably going to look at three straight wins and then you get me next week. So congrats, bud. I don't know how you did it, but it's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. I'll take Allen. Another interesting matchup, I think, again, when I, 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 want, I want to believe, like, I really want to believe in this um, vintage hype, but I've been down this rabbit hole probably like five times. Don't let me down, dude. I know you didn't have Tyreek Hill, completely get that, but a lot of people have come at you for your management. Now, obviously, I'm going up against you. So I didn't say anything. So I just throw it out there. I know you listen to the podcast. Be 100% honest. When at 3.30, when the Dolphins made Jordan Howard a healthy scratch, I was absolutely shocked you didn't swap to Salva and Ahmed. I was shocked because I was really nervous you were going to do that. And I really thought I was going to lose. I don't know. Would I have lost if you did that? No, I probably still would have won, right? 79. I probably still would have won. So maybe it didn't matter anyway, so good for you. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Tua Tago, whatever. Uh, I don't like any of these guys. Um, you're seeing... Tua, Tua, I don't think, has much of a ceiling unless he needs to be in a game where they're going to have to be in a shootout. It's gross because I don't like it, but I'll take Lamar Jackson. Mike Evans and Fulgham, Tyree Kill and Devontae Adams. Uh, slam dunk on the hard side of things. Rex Burkhead. Alvin Kamara and Rex Burkhead versus James Robinson and Salben Ahmed. Uh, Kamara by default, I guess. I'll go on that side. Don't like Burkhead. Ahmed, as long as everybody's kind of quote-unquote inactive, he's going to see the workload. He looks decent in spurts. This is not a starting caliber running back by any means. Um, James Robinson's in a tough matchup, so I can't trust that. 
Hayden Hurst, Darren Waller. Give me Darren Waller, although he's been very, very uh, disappointing this year, to say the least. Ruggs and Noah Fant, A.J. Brown, and Michael Pittman Jr., that combination was hit or miss last week. So I think they bounce back perfectly in this one. And then Tampa versus we don't have a defense in as I am recording. Hmm. Okay. Um... Things that are going to really hurt Patrick. Brandon Ayuk, I think, was really developing into something. And Fulgham, I don't know if he's getting phased out or not, but who knows? Harsh, I think I think this is a great bounce-back spot for you. Um, my only recommendation, if that is a recommendation, is that Tua, I know you want to believe in the hype, and I get it, and that's fine. I just don't know if he's great for fantasy. Um, if you look at his schedule coming up, this is just kind of something I want to point out. Denver does not look like it's a competitive game. The Jets don't look like it's a competitive game. Cincinnati does not look like it's a competitive game. So realistically, I wouldn't be shocked if this guy gets between 15 and 18 in those weeks. Kansas City, though, could be competitive. New England... Be interesting to see what Belichick has dialed up for him. So I think week 14, man, you really might start to see his upside and what he can actually do because they're against the Chiefs. This is going to be really, really fun. Um, and again, with him having such a low floor and you're starting Salvan Ahmed, which I get it. You have to like, this guy got 21 carries. Like you're starting him. No if ands, or buts about it. But kind of limits the upside. Um, I mean – Case in point, look at what Kyler Murray's doing, and I have to start like Chase Edmonds. It doesn't do much, but um, yeah, I think Harsh, you bounce back. This is going to be the third matchup that I'm going to dictate rivalry week. Um, yeah, I have news for you. I did not see this standings. If, if anything, I, I think that the standings would have been reversed uh, come start of the season. Wow. I, B Magic, I don't know how you're doing it, man. Uh, I don't know how you're winning all these tight matchups and these low-scoring matchups. They always seem to break your way. And the man who brought you into this league, your first win was against them in week one. Now you guys kind of collide yet again. Okay. So uh, with that being said, guys, I don't know what to expect here. Um, there are major – be magic, I'll be honest, there's major concerns with your team still. Like, I don't buy a lot of the fluky stuff because then it's then it's a coin flip call that you're winning all the time. Like, the MVS call, props to you. I, I wouldn't have called that. And especially in a win game, man, that was – I don't know how the hell you did that. I did like Beasley, though. That, that one I did call. I know I posted it in the chat, but – Look, bottom line is this. You have eight wins. I don't see – I think it, it's unofficial, but I think you've locked up a playoff spot by now, in my personal opinion. So it's just a matter of seeding at this point. Well, let's break this matchup down, Johnny. Uh, you just got Alex on the wrong week, although I do think that his team becomes very interesting considering the division that he's in. Johnny has Big Ben, and you got Aaron Rodgers. My only concern well, – I, I don't even know if I have a concern – with Big Ben uh, against Jacksonville, but they haven't been running the ball efficiently, which is great for Jay, but do they still want to do that? I got. I have an interesting theory here that maybe they're saving James Conner for the playoffs because this guy never finishes a full 16. That's just my weird theory, but could be happening. Uh, Aaron Rodgers against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, Aaron Rodgers in a dome means that his accuracy is going to be even better. Uh, Devontae Adams, I think, is healthy. I know he left the game in the last time, but eh. uh, I'll still go Aaron Rodgers just because he's had such a better floor than Roethlisberger. Thielen and Robbie Anderson versus Calvin Ridley, who's questionable, and Chase K uh, Chase Claypool. Okay, well, Adam Thielen looked great last last time. So, Johnny, it's, it's a matter of do you think that the Vikings are going to have to throw in this game? My answer is probably no, so temper expectations. Robbie Anderson, uh, okay. I know you traded for him. He's getting the targets, but he's not doing much of anything with these targets. Um, I'm not big on Robbie Anderson. I They have not used him the way that, like, him and DJ Moore, the roles have switched. And in a way, I thought that was bad for me. And now what I'm seeing that Robbie Anderson is doing right now, I'm not big on the guy. 
Like this guy is literally used as like a check down, third down. Like the only play that seemed to be explosive for him was a wheel route, and now people are keying onto it. I think rest of the season, DJ Moore, I think, wins you weeks. Robbie Anderson is always eight to twelve a week, and I just don't think in this day and age that's what you want. I mean, you love those floor guys, I get it, but you need explosive guys too to mix in with that, which I don't know if you have. Um, well, you do. It's inconsistent. But B Maddie, now I'm going back to you. Calvin Ridley, if he plays, is in a great spot. We got to see what the practice reports say, and so is Claypool. So give me the B Magic side. Uh, Derrick Henry and Darrell Henderson, oh, they are in the, probably the worst match matchups possible. I think alone Aaron Jones, I think, gives B Magic the advantage here. I don't like Daryl Henderson against Tampa. Uh, by the way, uh, Cam Akers now getting involved just kills this whole backfield completely. You are now dealing with a three-man committee, which is impossible to figure out, and nobody has a set role. So until one of those guys gets phased out, you can't start this backfield, but it is what it is. Aaron Jones and Ezekiel Elliott. I uh, absolutely hate Ezekiel Elliott. Aaron Jones will be fine, though. Derrick Henry... It's close to November, so maybe he starts warming up, but I'll go be magic. Mark Andrews, with Nick Boyle not being there, should see more targets, which means his floor is going to be better, which I do like. Rob Gronkowski against L, uh, the Rams. I think Gronk might be a guaranteed touchdown every week, so I'll go Gronk. This is where I go for the J advantage. I love Damien. Oh, man, it sounds gross saying that. Damien Harris, I think at this point, you got to start him. I mean, he's getting the volume. Jacoby Myers... Is an absolute boss. Uh, this guy is your prototypical J type of receiver. He's getting the target share. I know last week you don't want to count it. I get it. It makes sense because he threw a touchdown, but he's the only one who's catching passes on New England. They are starting to get back in a playoff form, if you believe that. I mean, some people might not, but he's in a good matchup. Phil Lindsley, absolutely not. Marcus Elder scaling. Uh, lightning won't strike three times in a row. Get out of here. No. Uh, Pittsburgh against Jacksonville might might save you. Detroit against Carolina is interesting, but I will probably would look elsewhere. But I know defense is a little scarce right now. Big Ben side of things for Jay should be okay. Uh, this, look. I like Ben Roethlisberger and I like your flexes, but I am not very high on Thielen, Robbie Anderson, like, the middle of your lineup scares me, whereas B-Magic is the opposite. I think he has the advantage everywhere on you except for quarterback and the flexes. So this looks like it could potentially even out, but I've seen enough to think that this guy will survive any type okay, of matchup. This game becomes really, really B-Magic. interesting because I, I believe the title is on the line. I got to check. Coffee, I know you lost. I don't know your division record, Coffee. My bad. No, title is not on the line. Damn, Coffee. Uh, you got one and two in the division. David, a perfect three and oh. I, where the fuck was I? Excuse me. Where the hell was I when this happened? My God. And so, I, Coffee, you just, you're playing for a wild card spot as of right now. You need to lock that up. Um, before we begin. Coffee, I'm lowering your projection to 115 after that Justin Herbert haircut. That's just gross. God almighty, what the heck? Um, I, I don't even know what the heck that is. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. Herbert or Pat Mahomes? Well, I can't follow it up and say draw. Uh, Mahomes will smash uh, Justin Herbert in this matchup. Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk. Well... Here's the thing, man. You have the Cardinals coming off an emotional victory, short week on Thursday. I expect this to be completely improvised. Should be another high-scoring game. My only concern here is – no, I don't even have a concern. What am I talking about? All right, Keenan Allen will be okay. Cooper, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup. Coffee. Uh, buyer's remorse might happen, fella, and I'm going to explain why. Um, Whitworth got hurt. Which means that they are now the Rams I'm talking about. Rams are going to go back to two tight end sets now because they need the extra blocking. Goff was getting clobbered, man. Um, which means more Woods and more freaking Josh Reynolds. David, nice pickup for spending money on that. 
Um, Josh Reynolds, I mean, this is a guy, believe me, this is a guy I always used to throw touchdown props on. Uh, I, I, he was always intriguing to me because I felt like we never seemed to saw him as the deep threat guy. He was always replacing Cooper Cup because he got hurt every year in the slot. And with Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods on the outside, I always thought that he was kind of, you know, in a good spot. Now he's a he's so much better as the deep threat guy than he is the slot guy. Uh, this is a guy, dude, who's been uh, – somebody tweeted out since week, I think, five or six. He's had more targets than Robert Woods, which to me seems a little weird, but I guess it's okay. Uh, I do think this, though. I think the Rams just get destroyed in this game. I think Tampa's front, they're not going to be able to run. Goff is going to get clobbered. This this is going to be a game where I do think that the, the Buccaneers just single-handedly destroy the Rams, which means that Cooper Cup can be involved in those high-target games. But I am a little bit nervous to see what kind of their base formation is going to be. But needless to say, Cooper Cup will still be on the field. Like That's the thing that people automatically assume is, oh, this means that Cooper Cup's not playing. No, no, no. He'll be out there. He's just not going to play 100% of the snaps like he usually would. So take that for what it's worth. It it might piss you off a little bit. Uh, But I really on it. Oh, really? If you ask me, Keenan Allen's in a good spot. Cooper Cup potentially could be in a good good spot. I love Hopkins and Kirk against Seattle, who's just been awful. Kirk had his hot streak snapped. I get it. But I still got to go with these guys, man. I really do. James Conn or uh, Miles Sanders. For a second, I thought you had David Johnson again. Duke Johnson and Leonard Fournette. Uh, give me the coffee side of things. Connor, this is now uh, – Connor has had a really bad match. Uh, he's, he's underperformed is what I meant to say. Excuse me. Sanders, I think, is just your definition of a floor guy. He reminds me of sophomore year Le'Veon Bell, where Le'Veon Bell was always like 12 to 15 a week, but he was never reaching his potential yet. I think that's Miles Sanders this year. James Conner on the other side of thing. I said this on Johnny's matchup because he has Big Ben. They might just be saving him for the playoffs because he's never healthy. I don't know. But bottom line is, and I know I've never been a big James Conner guy. Uh, my thing about James Conner is he's not amazing at anything. He's just serviceable. But needless to say, I don't think Duke Johnson and Leonard Fournette can compete with the running backs that uh, Rob has. TJ Hawkinson will be Mike Isecki. Will Fuller and Jalen Rager versus Jameson Crowder and Sammy Watkins. Well, Watkins becomes an interesting X factor here if he's healthy. Uh, Jameson Crowder is an absolute no for me. I There's a reason I got rid of him. But we would love for him to get 20 targets every, every game and get 20 points. That was crazy. I'll take Will Fuller and Rager. His stock is starting to climb up, but I, I just can't get behind Philly. Starting the Chargers D over the Miami D, though, coffee. Hmm. Uh, Cincinnati against Washington. Don't like that matchup at all, to be honest. Cincinnati can't stop a nosebleed, really. I think I think the Chargers matchup serviceably wins this one. All right, so now I have to make a case on how this matchup can go. Again, without Christian McCaffrey, David seems very top-heavy. It's, are the Cardinals going to be in a shootout? The correct answer is yes. Is Patrick Mahomes going to dominate? Correct answer is yes. Which means if those things happen, I think everybody else just kind of has to get you sprinkled in 8 to 10. This coffee team, man, it was very hard for me to figure out all year. I like Keenan Allen, and I think against the Jets, he should be fine. Uh, Herbert should be fine. It's a great stack. You're stacking the whole Chargers. Um, I'm not going to say anything. Um, On both sides of, of of the field, on both sides of the field here, I think, you know, the Chargers can definitely get a lot of sacks. They have not gotten any interceptions this year, dude. Their defense is just bad. Jo- uh, Joey, Jerry Barisa, I don't know if he's playing yet. We got to see it on the conditions. Like, I understand, like, he, there is, there is, I would not be out at all shocked if the Jets got their first win. Like, and I am not big on the Jets, you know that. But, like, this Chargers team just finds any possible way to lose, they'll do it. They'll do it. I don't know. That's just me speaking. Um, All right. Shut the fuck up, Nick, and pick a winner. All right. Here we go. Herbert Mahomes. Herbert Mahomes. Got to go Mahomes. 
I got to be honest. I think I might take David uh, on the swole fact of the Arizona Cardinals guys going against uh, Theohoff. Um, but I absolutely hate everything. Oh, dude, I'm in a weird spot. Oh, you know what? I think there's more of a guaranteed floor with Rob Coffey where I think that his flexes will be the difference in this one to get him a very sneaky win. I'm going to say ballpark at 117, Rob Coffey to David 113. Without a doubt, without a doubt, this has to be the matchup of the week. I don't care what the record says on one of these teams. This this, this is a good team. I think this team has just really gotten the crap end of the stick, and he finds himself in the same position he was in last year. I think David Cryer re really made a risky move trying to make a playoff push, and it almost worked. He just came one game up short. Just one. Paul has pretty much been at the top of the throne until last week where – Russell Wilson needs to get his, you know what to get. It's not, it's not him. It's really, really not him. But I, Paul, as of right now, I haven't heard anything about Tyler Lockett. If Lockett, for whatever reason, was to be out in this game, it would substantially lower my expectations for Russell Wilson because you saw what happened last time. Patrick Peterson was one on one with DK, and now if Lockett's gone, they have the ability to double cover and bracket him the whole game. Oh, dude, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. I really don't like it. Uh, so that is one thing that I am factoring in. But on the expectation that Lockett could play, I'll take Russell Wilson over uh, Thomas Brady. DK Metcalf, Deontay Johnson, Juju, or Tyler Boyd. Sneaky matchup here is for Tyler Boyd. Um, I don't want to detail the chart just because I've had a long day, number one. And... Uh, I want to get up, get through this as quickly as possible, but I'll tell you why I like Tyler Boyd a lot in this matchup. Kendall Fuller has been really good coverage on the outside for the Washington football team, which means with the amount of times that Burrow passes, I do think that Boyd is going to see a lot of the middle of the field. Juju has come back alive for some reason, uh, scored another touchdown. Could it happen again this week? It's a serviceable matchup. I don't, I'm not big on that though. DK Metcalf. We'll have to see what happens. I don't know. DK, the, he, this is the thing. He's not in that elite Megatron Julio Jones tier yet because you've seen time and time again, Paul, when matched up against these elite man-to-man -man corners, and this is going back to last year even, okay? Jalen Ramsey, he caught one ball on him last year. I remember that. Uh, Jair Alexander, he didn't do anything in that playoff game. It was all Lockett. Patrick Peterson shut him down. Jalen Ramsey shut him down. Although he did beat Ramsey once. So I don't know what the playbook is going to look like for Russell Wilson. He needs Chris Carson back, though, to get this offense moving. Deontay Johnson. Paul, you know, hindsight maybe, but it looks like he won that trade. Dalvin Cook and Kareem Hunt versus Clyde edwards Hilaire, And I'm assuming somebody's on a bye because you got Shady McKissick. So Alex Smith is in, which means he's dump off city. You like that for Miss Kissick's floor. Clyde edwards Hilaire. What's this running back situation going to look like? Because the last time we saw these guys two weeks ago, all three of them touched the field. And if that's the case, no thank you. That means they don't, they don't have a floor. They don't have much upside. So give me, oh, easily Dalvin Cook and Kareem Hunt. Travis Kilfu, Dallas Gard, give me Travis. Uh, Godwin is in right now versus as of today, we have Keelan Cole and Ronald Jones who I will admit has looked very good. It's just a matter of, and I really thought he was going to get benched, and he hasn't. So looks like this might be a league winner. God, God, I can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah, Paul, I have no idea who you're putting in at that last flex. Um, okay. So, Paul, I think we, we know that your team's upside isn't where it was at the start of the beginning, but I don't think it's because your team's falling off. I think... Injuries with Chris Carson. Uh, Chris Carson was as stable as they come, right? The guy, did you get rid of any guys, in my opinion, that I think could have been league winning type of guys or guys that when you look back, I should have never done that? Like, I don't think so. I really just think it's been a bad thing of injuries. You got rid of Deontay, you got him back now. 
and I'm losing my train of thought. I have no idea who the heck you even got in that deal. I, I don't remember. But um, I think now I, I like what you've done here because I think you can afford, you know, if Carson doesn't get back together, I think this McKissick move might be kind of sneaky for you in the playoffs. But I do think that Clyde edwards Lair has to step up. All right. David's side of things, I think this is a very scary run. He's going to have to probably win out to get, get a wild card spot because he only has four wins. But he's playing for a wild card spot, no doubt, because uh, he can't get to eight wins. Uh, he looks like the scariest team in this division, if health permitting. Uh, the thing with Cryer that I've noticed, though, is that these flexes have just been hard to figure out. And I can't even <laughs> – he's got A-Rob on the bench this week, man. It's, it's pretty good stuff. It's an even matchup. Here's the way I want to say it, right? So I'm going to give you two kind of different scenarios here. Dalvin Cook looks like a great bounce-back spot candidate here. Uh, Kareem Hunt will get catches and everything else will be okay. If Russ has both Chris Carson and Lockett in, I think I, I really like Paul's chances, especially in a shootout type of a game, which we saw, which to me I think was the game of the year so far. I, I, I can't deny that. But if those guys were out for whatever reason, I really think that Dalvin Cook is the biggest game changer here to put Cryer up above in the points. So, Paul, this is a big one because I think a lot of people for the first time this year are counting on you to beat this team because this is a very scary team if they were to make a run into the playoffs. I think this is going to be a fun matchup. I think it's going to be very, very high scoring no matter what. My only worry with Paul is, and again, it's... This is not me saying because I have Tyler Lockie. Like, he's been very quiet the last three weeks. But seeing what Patrick Peterson did to DK Metcalf a few weeks ago, if Lockett's not there, dude, you can almost guarantee Arizona is going to bracket the crap out of DK Metcalf, which means that Russ is going to have to improvise. You might have to see David Moore step up. You might have to see Hollister step up. And I don't even know what the running game. The best thing for Seattle is getting Chris Carson back, and they want to be – you can't let Russ cook and not have an established running game because of that line. We know this. So just going to throw that out there. But I'll take – if a full, healthy Seattle squad comes to play, comes to town, or, well, and the Hawks nest, whatever, you should be good to go.